What Nika chased after him, shouting, Izu, I love you. I need you. Just this once. Come to me, my love. Once upon a time, in the beautiful village of Umaku, there lived a young man named Izuna, who lived with his mother. Izuna was the only son of his mother and was raised up by her alone after his father died many years ago. Neka, his mother, tried her best to bring Izuna up in the right way, but it seemed all her efforts were useless. As a teenager, Izuna had always been rebellious and troublesome. Whenever his mother cooked a pot of soup, he would secretly go into the kitchen and pick out all the meat from the soup to eat. Stealing the meat was bad in itself. But what was worse was that the soup would get soured because he had dipped his hand into it. Nika did not suspect her son at first and would sadly throw the soup away, cursing whomever stole from her pot of soup. However, she was shocked when she saw Izuna stealing from her soup one day. Izuna, so it has been you since all this while. You have been the one causing my soup to sour. You this boy, you would not kill me. She picked up a stick to beat Izuna with it. But before she could get to him, he had run out of the compound laughing at her. Izuna was not bothered about any consequences. He knew that his mother would not be angry forever and would not kill him. After all, he was her only son. Izuna went to meet his best friend, Ugo. He stood at a distance and whistled to Ugo to come out. Whistling was their normal way of calling themselves because their mothers had warned them to stay away from each other. Izuna's mother believed that Ugo was a bad influence on her son, while Ugo's mother believed it was Izuna who was leading her son astray. But only the two friends knew who was misleading the other. Ugo heard the whistle and came out to meet his friend. They both ran off and went into the bush. They got to a clearing and sat down. Izuna complained to Ugo, My mother caught me today when I was taking meat from her soup. She was very angry and chased me with a stick. I don't think there will be any more hope for me to take meat again. I don't know what she might do, but I just have to remove my mind from her soup for now. Ugo laughed at him. Look at you. Is that why you are worried? Do you think it is my mother's meat I have been surviving on since? How often does she even use meat to cook? I have several sources. If you want, I can introduce you to them. Izuna looked at Ugo and said, You are a bad friend, so you have been enjoying all these sins, and you did not even tell me. Do we now keep secrets? Ugo assured him not to worry, as he would carry him along on all his escapades henceforth. And that was how Ugo and Izuna started to sneak into people's kitchen and steal their soup. They were so smart with this that they were never caught and whenever they were accused for any crime without evidence, they would both boldly deny the allegation. Ugo and Izuna continued this way and they grew into men with zero moral character who would do anything to survive in life, not minding the consequence. Izuna secretly admired a young, beautiful girl named Omasiri. He had liked her since they were young, but he lacked the courage to approach her. As they grew up, he could not help but develop deep feelings for her. He then decided to approach her and tell her about his feelings. Omasiri usually went to the market every morning to sell firewood for her mother. Izuna knew her regular routes and so he waited there for her to pass. Omasiri came as usual and Izuna went up to meet her. Oma, 
How are you doing today? Omasiri was shocked to see the village's notorious young man approach her. Right from her teenage years, her mother had warned her to not associate with Izuna and his friend because they were bad influence. So she was surprised that this same Izuna was talking to her. She said a short prayer in her heart. God, please, I don't want any trouble from Izuna. She then replied him, I am fine. Izuna smiled and then went on to tell her that he wanted to discuss something important with her. Oma, I have liked you for a very long time. I can't keep hiding it again from you. I want us to be friends. I will take care of you and protect you. Just accept my proposal, Oma, and I will make you very happy. Oma was stunned. Her heart was beating very fast. She knew she was in trouble. Hey, what have I done to attract his attention? She replied him, Izuna, I appreciate your kind intentions towards me. But please, I am not interested. I need to hurry to the market now. Omasiri said and left. Izuna stood there smiling. You are playing hard to get, right? Don't worry, I will get you. Izuna said to himself. On different occasions, Izuna would see Omasiri and tried to talk to her, but she would quickly walk past him, not wanting to even hear him speak. He was getting frustrated, and so that day, he was in the company of Ugo when Omasiri passed. She wanted to quickly walk away, but Izuna held her and asked her, Omasiri, have you been avoiding me? I told you about how I feel about you, but you haven't given me a response. I love you, Oma, and I want you to be mine. Oma was visibly irritated at this time. Izuna, I don't love you, and I can never love you. Please leave me alone. I am not interested, and don't stop me again, please. Omasiri said and walked away, leaving Izuna standing there speechless and embarrassed. His friend Ugo walked up to him, laughing mockingly at him. Mr. Loverboy, your love interest is not interested in you, so your love is mission impossible. But come to think of it, how can this little girl of yesterday be embarrassing you like this? I will blame you for it though. Why would you be begging her for love when you can make her beg you for your love? Izuna was curious instantly. Make her beg for my love? How? How is that possible? Ugo smiled and told him to relax as he would take him to a juju man who would make a love charm for him and make Omasiri love him uncontrollably. Izuna was skeptical and asked Ugo if there was any repercussions but he said there was none. Izuna then followed him to the juju man's place. He gave Izuna a love ring and told him to touch Omasiri with the ring and she would beg him endlessly for his love as long as he had the ring on. He also told them that the ring could work on any other woman he wanted and when he was not using the ring, he should remove it and keep it safe. Izuna was happy and thanked the man and they left. He decided to use the ring the next day. He would wait for when Omasiri would pass by and touch her with the ring. Ugo told him that he wanted to be there and watch the epic sight of Omasiri passionately begging him for love. Izuna laughed and they went home. The next morning, Izuna dressed and came out wearing the ring. Ugo came minutes later and saw him there already. Izuna, this one you are here already. It seems you slept here, Mr. Lover Boy. Wait, wait, don't touch me with that ring, oh. I don't want to fall in love with you, Ugo said and they both laughed. They stood and waited for Omasiri. However... Three hours passed and they did not see her. They waited more and she still did not pass by. Ugo was tired 
and told Izuna that they should go and return the next day. She would definitely pass by and he would use the ring on her. They decided to go back home. As they were going, Ugo reminded Izuna to remove the ring and keep it safe. Izuna told him that he was aware but he wanted to know if he would see Omasuri on his way. I would definitely take it off before I get home, Izuna said. Izuna returned home that afternoon and saw his mother in front of the house, prepared to go out. She was struggling with her zip and was relieved when she saw him coming. Izuna, come and help me with my zip. Izuna quickly went and helped her zip up her blouse. At that instant, Neka, his mother, faced him and said, Izu, where have you been? Izu replied her, I went out to attend to an emergency. Neka then told him, Izu, it's not fair. You left me here all by myself. I have missed you. Come and hold me. Izu, touch me. I have missed you a lot. Izuna was shocked at his mother's actions. When did she start all this endearment to him? He then looked at his fingers and saw that he still had the ring on his fingers. He shouted, Ah, I am dead. Mama, no, no. It wasn't meant for you. Mama, please stop. At this time, Neka had started to beg Izuna to sleep with her. Izum, please don't do this to me. I love you so much. Let us go inside. Izu, you are hurting me. Am I not beautiful enough? Look at me. Izu, Izu, please. Izuna just stood there with his hands on his head, looking at his mother, profess love to him. I am finished. What have I done? Ugo has killed me. Neka could no longer control herself again and she started to hold Izu and drag him inside. Izu, please, quench this desire in me. Just once, please. I love you. Can't you see? Izuna saw that it was getting uncontrollable and ran away. But Neka chased after him, shouting, Izu, I love you. I need you. Just this once. Come to me, my love. Izuna ran as fast as his leg could carry him to his friend's house and called him out. Ugo, you have killed me. That ring, I mistakenly used it to touch my mother. Now she is chasing me and begging me to sleep with her. Ugo screamed. What? Why would you make that type of mistake? I told you to remove it before going home. We need to quickly go to the juju man's place and see if there is any solution. When they got there, they complained to the man who told them that the only solution was to sleep with his mother and after that, the charm would be broken. Izuna shouted, Sleep with my mother? That is an abomination. I cannot do that. The juju man told him that there was another solution, but it was not simple. The ring would not leave his fingers unless he slept with the woman he touched the ring with, or his finger would be cut off. Only then could the charm be broken. Izuna tried to remove the ring at this time, but it was stuck. He started to cry for help. Ugo consoled him, telling him that he should just make a decision and everything would end. Izuna pushed Ugo, shouting at him, You are worse than the devil. You are a bad influence in my life. I should have listened to my mother and stayed away from you many years ago. Now look at where you have landed me to. You caused all this. Ugo continued to console Izuna. And finally, Izuna decided to cut off his finger. He could not bear to sleep with his mother. His finger was cut and the ring was off. He went back home not saying a word to Ugo. When he got back home, he saw his mother sleeping. He sat by her side crying. 
full of regrets. His mother had sacrificed so much for him. She had single-handedly raised him up, teaching him the right way of life. But he had chosen to be a rebellious child over and over again. When Neka woke up, she was calm. She saw Izuna crying by her side and was startled. What is it, Izuna? Why are you crying? Izuna fell on his knees and started to beg her for forgiveness. Mama, I am sorry. I am sorry for all the pain I have caused you. I know I have not been the best of sons to you, but I am ready to change. I will become responsible. Mama, please forgive me. Neka was confused and surprised. What happened to her son for him to have a change of heart? She could not remember anything, but she was glad for whatever it was that changed her son. Izuna decided to leave the village to learn a trade. His mother supported him and begged her brother to put him through in the line of his trade. Izuna avoided Ugo and never had anything to do with him again. Even though it was a near miss, he had learnt his lesson the hard way and he resolved to be responsible and make the right decisions in life. Thank you for watching this story. One important lesson I want to bring out from this story is for us to not throw stones in the marketplace. The evil you wish for someone else might just come back to you. Share with us in the comment section what lessons you could learn from this story. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel for more interesting stories. Like and share this video with your loved ones and remain blessed. Bye!